Welcome to the EchoEd Echo Skills tutorial. My name is Ruth Ram. In this tutorial, I would like to focus on the parasternal long axis images. But before we start, I think it's important that you know that there are in fact three parasternal windows. A high parasternal window, great for assessing the ascending aorta. A lower, what we would call the ideal parasternal window, which is great for measurements and a lower parasternal window, which is a complementary view of the ventricles and the valves. I would like to demonstrate to you five things that you should do when obtaining a parasternal long axis image. Step number one is big circles. Be a little wild when you start and check the lie of the land. Say hello to these three potential parasternal images. I would recommend starting high, close to the sternum. Moving down the sternum before heading out lateral to complete the circle. And I would definitely do this two to three times. Now sometimes, particularly on our female patients, it's not possible to do these large circles and I would then go for a stripe approach where we start close to the sternum and stripe the probe down, heading a little more lateral each time. Step number two, find a black and white image. This is where we look for a keyhole through to the heart, where the blood pool is black and the tissue is white. Now this picture may not look like the ideal parasternal long axis just yet, but you are almost there. Step number three, find the aortic valve. As you can see from each of these three parasternal windows, they all have a common element and that's the aortic valve. So we need to find it. What I've done on my patient is I've tattooed on where the aortic valve lives. So you can imagine if you're attempting to obtain a high parasternal window and you want to bring the aortic valve into, into view, you need to tilt down or tilt inferiorly. When we move to the area where an ideal parasternal window would be, you may not need to tilt much at all to see the aortic valve. And if you are down in a lower window, of course, you'll need to tilt up. So it's therefore important to remember where the aortic valve is located when you are attempting to find it. The only things you're allowed to do are tilt up or tilt down, nothing else. Step number four, recheck the image marker. For the parasternal long axis image, the image marker needs to be pointing towards the midclavicular region of the right shoulder. And when we're learning, it's very easy for us to rotate the transducer unnecessarily. So I think it's a good idea at this point to recheck that your image marker is pointing towards that midclavicular region. I'll move my image marker and then I'll reposition it back to the midclavicular region. Step number five, and this is a step that's a little optional, but it's opening up the aorta. What I've done to my patient this time is I've tattooed on his, not only his aortic valve, but also the aorta. And what you really wanna do for a parasternal long axis is open up the ascending aorta. So looking at it in its long axis. To get a long axis of the aorta, let me use my paper fan to show you the beam we need to be down the long axis of the aorta. Now, I did just mention that we had the image marker pointing towards this right clavicular region of the right shoulder, and that won't always go down the aorta, um, direct the beam down the long axis of the aorta. So with a little bit of slow, slowly clockwise turning the probe, you can achieve a long axis of the aorta, and what that will do is inadvertently open up the LV. In summary, these five tricks of the trade will assist you in obtaining a good parasternal long axis image. Number one, big circles. 
Number two, a black and white picture. Number three, find the aortic valve. Number four, recheck your image marker. And number five, if needed, clockwise turn to open out the ascending aorta. Now, it's your turn.